Hey folks, uh, also, one of, I've been cleaning up the shop lately. You can actually see the floor through here. This was stacked with all kinds of stuff. Still got a bunch of junk in the way. I cleaned up under this bench pretty good. It was, you think that's bad? Uh, I got stuff all up underneath the red barracuda. And uh, there's the radiator from Furious. There's the original radiator busted on me. Never ever got around doing anything with it. But I, I had all my tools in on this little roll around cart and uh, kind of decided I didn't like that. So I bought out a guy's inventory who was getting a divorce and retiring and got this toolbox from him, part of the deal. I bought, got seven truck and trailer loads of parts and tools out of him. Helped him move, helped him haul a lot, a lot of stuff. And uh, so he made me a sweet deal on some stuff. I got this toolbox and I got thinking, well, I'll just use this toolbox as my temporary toolbox to keep near the car I'm working on and I can roll it around on the cart. And I will further clean this cart out as I go. But uh, I'm just getting this going. We'll still, as we uh, work on stuff, I'll, tools from my main toolbox will migrate over to this toolbox. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil in fear. I'm not change the oil, drain the oil out of Furious. And here's why. It's got that deep uh, eight-quart baffled pan on it, race pan with the, you know, the big deep sump and everything and whatnot. And uh, looking at buying an engine from another racer, a 440, buying his engine out of his car, he wants to keep his oil pan because it fits his chassis, and this oil pan fits my chassis, so we've agreed to keep our oil pans He's building a more more powerful engine with his car. So I'll uh I'm gonna pull this engine out and I'll take the oil pan off and I'm gonna put the stock pan back on it that came with the car when I got it. This thing here, and this even it's got baffles, but it wasn't a deep, a deep pan. But I don't plan on hopefully I don't have to run that engine anymore. I'm just gonna put it put it on the engine dolly and roll it in the corner. And uh, I think I've got freeze plugs bad, so I bought these uh brass freeze plugs. I was hoping they I couldn't tell in the picture. And I ran that part number, and I was thinking these were the deep ones, but they're the shallow ones. But that's fine for the full engine's gonna sit in the corner. I'll put new freeze plugs in just in case I do need to run it again. All I'll need to do is swap the pans out if I want to swap the pans out. I may not. Um, I got to pick up the oil it now. I'm gonna drain the oil in these buckets here and reuse it. Why am I gonna reuse it? There's no sense in putting fresh oil in a tired motor that you're gonna just tuck away in the corner. So I'm gonna drain the oil out and try to get these, these clean. And uh, once I get the engine out, I'm gonna pour the oil in these things here. And once I get the engine out and the pan back on it, then I'll pour the oil back in it. And that'll be all we need. Just let it sit in the corner and maybe rotate it around once or twice a year, maybe three times a year. Just rotate it a few turns, make sure the rings don't stick. And uh, it's real windy here today, it's blowing everything around. So that's where we're at, folks. Let me get up in here and get this oil drained out. Okay, folks, while I'm sitting here waiting on the oil to drain in this engine, oil to drain, <laughs> uh, i got to take this front bumper off right here. It sticks out so far the engine crane won't, won't reach over and grab hold the engine, so i got to take the front bumper off. And uh, I may have to take that header support off. I think I do. In fact, I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, so... Uh, this is what I fabbed up to get this fiberglass bumper to fit. The it saved an enormous amount of, pan, of uh, pound weight. Uh, man, that, that front bumper was 60 pounds easy. And then the brackets had them shock absorber brackets and things were 10, 12 pounds a piece. So we eliminated all that with these lightweight brackets. What I'm gonna do, I didn't have time. What I'm gonna do when I put this back together is I'm gonna drill some, a few more holes in this stuff. And I know, I know you're going to say, well, it don't add up. It don't add up to nothing. But if you continue to drill holes like I will this piece with the hood latch, just keep drilling holes and stuff that's not structural or not the main part of the frame of the vehicle. And it adds up. Over long, you got a pound or two. And then another pound or two if you keep on. And it just, you know, I just believe it just keeps adding up. So try to save weight where we can. I've got an idea for these little pieces here. I'm not sure what that was. I think that's where the plastic shield was. It was bolted here, and I may do something with that to uh, seal this up somehow. But that's what we're going to do while waiting on the oil to drain. All right, folks. Bob out. Okay, folks. Uh, the 400 is ready to come out. It's getting late. I've spent a big part of the day on this header on this side. Uh, I had the starter captured. And uh, 
I finally, what I ended up having to do, I had to take this intermediate shaft out, which only took 30 minutes. I've taken quite a few of these shafts out, and I've taken this one out before, but I've, I'm getting better at it. 30 minutes I had this sucker out. Uh, there's the header. Starters over here on the bench. It's the old big Chrysler gear reduction starter. I do not plan to go back with that. That's all I could use on these headers. The mini starter wouldn't clear. Uh, I had to take uh, the whole front nose off. That's out here in the yard, right there. And uh, my field agent 390 came by and loaned me his boom extension. Uh, I bought a brand new engine hoist. The other one, the cylinder died. It was not a fold away, so I decided to just get another one. My engine hoist, even though it's uh, O'Reilly, AC Delco from O'Reilly's, uh, the hoist, the boom was four inches too short. So he, I, this is the fourth time I've barred his. This is the fourth time I've pulled this engine out. So uh, he had to take the whole front nose off and all. Then, it's, then still, my boom wouldn't quite reach in there like I want it to. And here's the, uh, here's the header and the radiator. So I'm gonna pull this motor out and retire it. I'll, uh, if, it's, if the block's not cracked, uh, it's probably a freeze plug, and I'll just put brass freeze, freeze plugs in it. Park it under the shelf on a dolly, engine dolly. Make it easy to move around without tipping over and that kind of stuff. Cover it up. Uh, right at the moment, there's no oil in it. I drained the oil out because i got to take the pan off. And uh, I've got another 440 in the works. I uh, hope, hope to be working that in here soon. And while i got the engine out, I'm going to fix a few things up in here that probably should have been. I don't like the way I did the transmission lines, for example. So... Well, we'll look at that. Tempted to pull the transmission out and send it back to the trans guy. I really am. I'm going to kick myself if I don't do that. But I swear this car is killing me financially. i got to quit spending money on it. Anyway, that's where we're at, folks. It's getting late. I'm going to uh, tomorrow morning. I'll come here and pull the motor out. It should, it should be a piece of cake. Later.